Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steve here with Tweaktown. Today, Tweaktown and Super O bring you a NVMe RAID setup guide for Supermicro boards. First thing you want to do is press delete, go into Supermicro's UEFI. And we're going to have to go in the advanced mode to set up RAID. Now you go to the advanced tab and you won't see a smart response technology uh, menu, which you should at the top. So we have to do a few things. First, we're going to have to set a drive mode from HCI to RAID. HCI is default, so we're going to go to our SATA and RST configuration menu. Here we will change AHCI to RAID. Um, it's called that. <laughs> and then we're going to remap our M.2 ports to RST controlled, which is smart response technology controlled. This is very important. Um, so you gotta make sure to do both of those. You can't do the center one, so don't even worry about it. Just those two you see on your screen right now. Now we're gonna go out of here and we're going to change our OP ROMs to EFI mode from legacy under the PCIe PCI PNP configuration menu. So we're going to change a video, and it's very important to also change CPU slot 7 uh, to EFI. Now, without changing that PS CPU slot 7, you won't be able to disable CSM mode, which is required for RST. I'm also going to change my M.2 to EFI as well. So now we're going to go, and I'm going to show you why you need to do that. So we're going to have to press F4 and save and exit and come back in to actually do this next step, but I want to show you the error it will toss out right now. So secure boot mode, it's not going to allow you to disable CSM uh, without disabling that port, the PCIe slot. See, you got to set video policy EFI first. So we got to save and exit because that will set our video policy to EFI. That's when we went in and changed the slot to EFI from legacy. So now we're going to get back into our BIOS by pressing delete. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go back, but this is getting a little bit, uh, it's kind of bothering me a little bit that we go in easy mode. So I'm going to change it so we're by default going to advanced mode. So we're going to go to advanced and we're going to get that boot feature option. We're going to go setup mode from easy to advanced and then wa -dee da now we're going to always be in advanced mode unless you clear your CMOS. Now we're going to disable secu uh, CSM under the secure, board me secure boot menu. And we're going to go to the save and exit mode and change our boot mode from legacy to EFI. I don't have any legacy devices. If you do, you might want to select dual. And you see, we see our uh, boot up disk, our Corsair Voyager with our OS. Now we're going to save and exit. And we're actually going to go, it's going to automatically boot into our USB stick. Now, you saw that, well, yeah, no, forget that. We're going to go and we're going to uh, basically go into the, oh, uh, we got to set up RAID. So we just set up the setup section. Now we're going to actually go in and set up RAID. So don't forget to do this. So now we go to advanced mode and we will still see Intel Smart Response Technology menu right above BIOS feature, boot feature. There we go, that menu was not there before, now it's there. Now we're gonna hit create RAID volume. And we're gonna select RAID zero, which is by default. Uh, that makes everything faster. RAID one creates a mirror. Uh, and then we're gonna hit X next to each of the drives that you want. It sounds counterintuitive, but you gotta do it. Then we're gonna set our stripe size, strip size to 64 kilobits. Uh, you can go larger, you can go smaller. Uh, smaller, I believe, will give you a larger drive. Larger will give you slightly small. I'm not too crazy about it, but you can read up on it more if you want. There is our drive. That's all it took to create the RAID. Normal and, yes, bootable. So there we have our KC1000s. And now we go to our boot menu, and you won't see this drive listed. And that's okay. That's what you're supposed to see. You're supposed to only see your boot drive and UEFI hard disk. You can set UEFI hard disk first and then boot drive after that, but Windows really takes care of that for you after you install it. So on our UEFI boot drive that we have created with the in Windows Media Creation Tool, which you download for free, downloads the OS, formats your USB stick in the proper GPT format, because that's what you need in EFI mode, you just plug it in and it's so easy to install Windows. Now we will see Windows little uh, circle come up, and we don't really need to do anything, it'll go right into the menu. We're going to fast forward parts of this process because they are not critical to the outcome of what we're trying to achieve here, which is to show you that the steps you need to take to use RAID on a Supermicro Z370 motherboard. So now we're going in and I'm going to say yes, 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 next, next, next. Um, I'm going to hit I don't have a key, but that'll come up real soon. So we're going to hit install now. Nothing is different up to this point, but you will go into the drive menu and you won't see your drive. And that's the only difference we got to do here. So you can always hit I don't have a product key. You will be restricted in certain things you can do. I'm going to do Windows Pro. You can always do home or whatever you've paid for. Um, so now we just go through these arbitrary menus and accept licenses that none of us are going to read. Go to our custom and hit load driver. This is the one part you have to do special for RAID. 
Now you browse and you should have already put the drivers on your USB stick and they should be there. Found it really quickly. This part right here takes anywhere from two to 10 minutes. The couple times I did it with this, uh, it took about five, 10 minutes to actually find the drive. It will automatically find the drive and just go back to the other menu. Um, and if it doesn't, it'll shoot out an error. There have been times where Windows installation has actually messed up and not found it. And I just went back and tried this exact Windows installation process again, and it worked fine. Uh, sometimes you have issues with USB bootable sticks and the OS itself. So there it is. That's our drive, just as we saw in the UEFI. Now we're going to hit next. And I'm going to fast forward through this part. One weird thing we saw is that it went from 0 to 100 on Windows copy file. It didn't do like getting files ready, stuff like that, which we're fast forwarding now. But it just went from 0 to 100. So if you don't see it move from 0, don't worry. It's not a big deal. So now we're going to fast forward through this. Nothing has really changed here. Um, yeah. So sit back, take a sip of coffee or water or some relaxing drink. Because Windows installation process, as we all know, is one of the most fun parts of building a computer. That was a joke. <laughs> Alright, so we're finishing up here. It'll automatically restart and take you into what you need to do. And at this point, if you had your USB stick set first, it'll override that and override into the hard disk. I've done this many times. I mean, I handle hundreds of motherboards, CPUs, combinations every year. And i would never had an instance with Windows 10 where it boots back into the USB stick if the USB stick is set first, which is a nice little handy trick Windows has installed and created to make installing operating system a lot easier on all of us. So now we're going to uh, complete the installation process. Yes, boot up is one of the coolest things. And the first time after you install OS, um, since now the UEFI and the operating system are so intertwined with EFI, there are certain things that might occur during post, or post might take longer on your first reboot after you set up your drive. So nothing to worry about. Uh, you can always disable certain things to make things boot faster, but this board doesn't take too long to boot. Um, we've also messed with the speed of this video, so yeah. So now we're just going to go and finish our Windows installation process. We are already uh, fast forwarding a little bit here. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to fast forward real soon. Um, because this is quite tedious to watch, uh, cause everyone's going to say, see the same things. And this next step has nothing to do with it. So here we go. We're fast forwarding. Now we're going to go through the options. We're going to go to the desktop and I'm going to show you that our speeds are basically saturating the DMI, which is the link between the CPU and the PCH. So basically what happens is you have your two M.2 drives and they're both connected to the platform controller hub, what used to be called the South bridge. Now, the bandwidth goes through that south bridge and then through the CPU to be processed, right? Now that link between the CPU and that bus is where we get a little uh, conjunction, and that's about 3.6 gigabytes per second. Here we're going to find our drive. RAID 0 volume, perfect. You can also at this point install your uh, toolkit from Intel. RST will be capable of being installed now, while you can't install it with a single disk. So, and then you can disable right back cache and do all the other cool stuff. But I just want to show you our RAID array is showing fine. We're going to run Crystal Disk and show you that with these two drives, we are now at 3.5 gigabytes per second on read and writes, which is tremendous. Um, a single one of these drives, that Kingston KC1000, is capable of about 2.8 gigabytes per second uh, read. And we're just going to increase that in a single drive, single larger drive. Um, so we're copying Crystal Disk. We're going to do zero fill, which is basically where it writes zeros. And here we can see our speeds are awesome. We are saturating that bus, which is exactly what we expected to see. Rate is working correctly. Speeds are tremendous. And um, even our, our 4K isn't taking much of a hit, which is pretty cool. I actually believe our 4K went up a little bit, um, which is nice. So RAID 0, SSDs are so reliable these days, there's not much risk with going with RAID 0. Um, so you just double the size of the drive, double the speeds, once they're not to like. A lot of people use RAID 5, RAID 1, stuff like that. I think RAID 0 is just fine for a normal consumer. So we're getting great speeds. Uh, this is exactly what we wanted. So if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. I hope you enjoyed our video. I'll talk to you later.